whatever the sport, whatever the competition, whatever the nationality, if your majority race, 75% is not represented or not willing to participate, you'll never succeed. Nope. Deal with that. Ask the question like a grown up. Now, we get to the part that I think might be a bit colourful. Mm. Local football. Local football. Singapore football. AFF. EFF, Debacle. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Singapore are out. Do you want to give us up to speed where we are with that? Okay. At the time of recording? At the time of recording, we are in the semi-finals. Uh, first semi-final has gone through. Vietnam have won 2-0 on aggregate. Oh. Mm. Against, against uh, Indonesia. Yep. Uh, Malaysia will play on, on this day after this recording. Uh, they'll play Thailand for the second leg. They are leading 1-0 mm. after their first leg at home to, in Bukit Jalil. And where's, where's Singapore? Well, mm -hmm. oh, that's the key point. They're they at home. Been, they're home resting because they've been eliminated. I predicted them for the semifinals. Didn't I, happen. I, I told, I, I predicted, just as I predicted Argentina for the He World won't Cup. let it go. Will he gets one <laughs> prediction right. He they, won't let it go. Uh, I they, saw you on PSV. They, Get home. They are Singapore <laughs> unlikely to uh, reach the semifinals. Proven true yeah. again. I mean, because that was a real big prediction. Yeah, that's right? Why, yeah, that's yeah. Why. That was a real big prediction. Right. I was just flying the flag. We got lots of readers' comments coming in. Singapore not making the semifinals. Okay, I'll do the first one. Izzy says, thank you, Izzy, for the comment. Why why does Singapore insist on getting a Japanese coach who wants to play a Japanese style of high pressing when the players lack the ability That's to very do good so? It's a very good question and it brings back to the age-old problem of why are we jumping on the short-term effect rather uh, than looking at the long-term yeah. goal? Okay, I got two things on this. On the one hand, I believe you must have a long-term approach, which is why we brought in Michel Sablon. Mm. We're going to have the 4-3-3 model that Belgium pioneered, and we're going to stick with it for 10 or 20 years. We didn't last three years, and it was gone. Jan Paulsen was brought in to give us the sort of Scandinavian Dutch model. Didn't work. And he now it's gone. unleashed the raw. Now we've got unleashed the raw. Before that, we had gold 2010. I do believe you have to have a long-term project, like the Germans, like the Dutch, like the Belgians, and so on. However... Whether we like it or not, the only times in recent history we have had success in local football is when we've had two practical, hands-on coaches in Barry Whitbread, and just a shout out to all yes. the Whitbread family, we know you're having a tough time, Barry Whitbread and Brady Avramovich, who basically just came in, and I would say they were the closest Singapore had to an Antonio Conte <laughs> or a Neil Warnock. Basically just came in and said, right, I've got 24 players to work with. These are my best dozen. For the next three or four years, I'm going to drill them, flog them, train them, brutalize them, and maximize every drop of blood, every nerve and sinew out of these players until they collapse because it's the best I have got. I haven't got time to worry about, you know, long-term plans and philosophies and this and that. What happened? Whitbread won the Tiger Cup in 98. Avramovich won three, three. four. Okay, three AFF championships. Mm. It was a pragmatic approach. It was a short-term approach, but it worked. Mm. It was the only time it worked. So I'm actually, I don't know about you guys, I'm genuinely torn on this one. I see the long-term need, yes, but we've got to also win games in the interim. Yep, yep. But let's look at the other comments first. We'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. Singapore government, so Ayu Santika says, Singapore government should reward Fundy to make more babies, provide him with more wives, at least 11 more babies. I, uh -huh. I know I can marry four, la, but come on. La. <laughs> four enough. La. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, I'm ignoring that part of the, of the comment, but I, I take the point. But with, the Fardis in Singapore football are becoming like the Clintons and the Bushes of American politics. <laughs> Is there nobody else? Do we have to keep going Maybe back to the same else. family? Which Maybe. we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think I think she's actually hit on a very good point. We shouldn't have to keep relying on the Fandis. Nope. <sighs> Meanwhile, Earth Chan says. The one and only good thing about the artificial pitch at Jalan Besar is that it isn't muddy. Yeah. Well, that's the, the only good thing. Yeah. Mm. And and here's the quote of the oh, day. Quote of the day. From Oof. Oof. It, might as well replace the name to Singapore Concert Hub from yeah. Singapore Sports Hub. Good quote. Now, this ties in with the fact that we had all kinds of hosting issues in Singapore, yeah, yeah. originally National Stadium. And even in Malaysia. I know, moved it to that Jalan Basar for the same reason. Mm. Jay Tao. Jay mm. Tao at both concerts in Singapore and Malaysia compromised the AFF. Mm. Do you want to do that part first? What do you want to do first? Yeah, I mean, okay, let's let's go with the stadium because it's a simple issue. First, Firstly, I think the... AFF must not have thought through when they rescheduled the mm. event to 
December and just and just now they have so up. much so many problems Singapore and Malaysia have with concerts. The real the realistic thing, I mean, a lot of fans say, why must hold concert at the national stadiums? The national stadiums are meant for football. Yeah, true. That that might be true, but the, the realistic thing is that you know. Every national stadium around the world hosts concerts. The thing is that you don't make them clash against sports events. And AFF has shot themselves in the foot Correct. by you know this abs- absolutely bad PR on everybody's part. Absolutely. That, that, that you know they, they that they have to clash with Jay Chow. Jay Chow doesn't come out looking bad. He just say, you know, I can I can postpone my y'all suddenly put, yeah, put this thing this in. This is not about Jay Chow no, at all. No, it's or not about funny his, fans or anything yeah. else. This no matter is about what football. fans may say, may, may blame Jay Chow. He's not in the Nothing wrong. Is is the is the AFF scheduling? It's always the, about the money. Money. It's always about the money because the thing is that if you look at it right after the World Cup, the momentum is there. Uh, People are still in the football mood. You know, like hey AFF, let's just piggyback. I can't. So it 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 comes back. I to actually that, yeah. feel overkill, but you know some yeah. people might feel. But different. I think I think as fans we need to realize that football now is, is a business. Mm-hmm. With the come talking back about the stadium, you know, like why are we talking? Even I think when the announcement of the EFF, the home grounds, when Singapore had the Jalan Besar, I think the online chatter was terrible because they say like, how come Singapore had the smallest yeah, out of the six thousand? Yeah. yeah, embarrassing. Yeah, on so, an artificial surface. On as well. artificial and, of- and that question must be asked. So right now, coming back to the point, and I think the past two times that I've been here, we're talking about local football. Like, what is FAS looking out for? Are they looking out for football? Or are they looking out for their own, their own benefits? Yep. My issue with this, and I'm a broken record with this, but I always say, do not give armchair critics another excuse to tech on local football yes. or regional football. Yeah. There's already enough, enough, and they're queuing up, waiting. You know, with the you know the target in their sights. We already, or certain people, cynics already believe that this championship is a be- is a very kampong local yep. Mickey Mouse tournament. Mm. Correct. If you can't even host it properly mm. on proper services, if you're being, you know, out muscled by Jay Chow <laughs> and his screaming female fans, then you look even more kampong. Yeah. You look even more parochial. Absolutely. You look even more Mickey Mouse. Absolutely. Don't give the armchair critics another excuse to turn their backs on the local game. Absolutely. And that's what this AFF does. If you want to be even more cynical, you could argue, let's take a step back. Has this enhanced the game or weakened it? In other words, local football, regional football, from a purely PR standpoint, might have been better off if it hadn't been hosted at all. And if mm. you're saying that, if you're literally doing more harm than good to the game. And I think there's a question to be asked about the planning, the organisation, the hosting and the venues because it all looked Kampong and Mickey Mouse. I totally agree. It's, it's, Don't it, it give cynics another been, excuse. It has been wrong. I feel that it's been wrong since the start of the, the tournament and it hasn't proven me otherwise. But another thing that's wrong is the Singapore team's performance. Yeah, let's get into that. I think, I mean, I mean, it's hard to even think of Singapore as a powerhouse nation in Southeast Asia right now. I think since 2012, after they won the, the, their fourth championship, they have not exited the group stage of this you know, I always say it's a Mickey Mouse tournament. They couldn't even get out of the group stage, except in five occasions, only one time they could get out. Yeah. I mean, and, and now you have an aging squad, which which means that there are not enough young talents to take over the likes of Haris Haron, Hassan Sani. They are all in their 30s. 30s Hassan Sani is 37. 30s, 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 30s. Yeah. Hmm. Um, uh, Faris Ramli, for all he's only 30. Gabriel Quack is 31. We'll go the other way. If you take the aging players and anybody called Fandi out of the squad, you've got almost nobody left. You've got no ones. And and, and now you've gone through so many different coaching changes. There's a saying that, you know, if you go through three bad coaches, the team is going to suffer. Yes. We have gone through five. After from Bernstang, Sundram, Fandi, maybe, if you don't want to count him, but he's also, he, he was also. Uh, coach before and then Yoshida that that that, that is uh, uh, out of their reach because I think because he wanted to he resigned because he wanted to go back to yeah, Japan, Japan yeah. so so that 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 is that is a bit more tragic but and you, now this current one Nishigaya from I mean I, I've gone to the to the press conference you all haven't gone through he's just very he looks he looks friendly and whatever but the, the 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 answers he gave is so run of the mill we'll do our best i'm totally focused on this mm. game 
Uh, no, you know, it's very you, PR. It's very, very PR, PR, very very, very non non incendiary. And he has no nothing. previous international experience. No right? previous international. But that's what you need for an international coach. You need to roll up the, the yes. nation. You need to get the nation on your side and yeah. and know. And when we when we go and then the 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 the, the, the fans would cheer for you. He is. I think he that hasn't grasped this yet. So you know that's a key point. And 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 then, do you think the players? Who after a long season now have to play in this AFF championship. If he continue, if he's so run of the mill by the book during training, mm. how how is he gonna get the team right, pumped yeah, yeah, up? I agree. Uh, to overachieve, you make a good point there. You can't underestimate the cultural or language connection that mm. has to be made in the dressing room of an international team. There was a debate going on in England about if Gareth Southgate didn't continue, should the coach be an Englishman? And I am among those who say, yes, not for nationalistic reasons. I don't care about the color of your passport. You've got to understand. First, you've got to literally speak the language yes. well, well, which I'm not sure this guy can. Mm. Secondly, you've got to understand the culture of the dressing room, right? Mm. Now, the reason that Raddy and Barry Whitbread were so successful is, A, English happened to be, you know, for yeah, Whitbread, yeah. it was his mother tongue. For Raddy, it was his second language, but he spoke it very well. You've got to have English in the dressing room, right? And you preferably some Malay, but you've got to have English. That's number one. So if the coach isn't Singaporean, he's got to understand regional football. He's got to understand the language, the culture, the setup, everything. I'm not casting aspersions on this guy. I don't know this guy. But if you cannot do that at international level, if you cannot connect with your dressing room, linguistically, Stop. culturally, it's, you can't rouse them, as you say. You idea, can't. Uh, and it doesn't matter about your resume. Fabio Capello had a resume as long as your arm. He could not do it with the England team. Yeah. If he couldn't do it, how's this guy gonna do it? Yeah. Realistically, you know, it's really it's really sad because it comes back to the question. Like, I think when you, you wrote a good point, like the armchair critics will always have this, you know, reason to reason to just condemn Singapore football. Mm. And like I said, you know, I'm I'm a supporter, but I'm a lapse. I think I mentioned before, I'm Le a lapse laps. Laps local mm. supporter. You mm. know, because the fact is that if I put my expectations low, I do not have to be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like. How how am I supposed to be motivated to support my team when my team is not even able to support themselves? You know, the players are you know playing you know like they don't have that fire, mm. you know. And I'm sorry, you know, I I mean I grew up in the Malaysia Cup era '94. Yep. You know, players playing for pride. You know, even though it was playing against state teams, mm. you know, when we won the four uh, AFF, you know, mm. Sashi Kumar scored with the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Shoulder of God. Blade of God. Blade of God. The team is united. Yeah, it's good team. Enough, you know, but you look at this Singapore team, it feels like you just get 11 players. Hey, whether you're good or not, mm. whether it's their form or Maybe not. Maybe that's club, all they have. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, really, it's really sad that, you know, like you can talk about, you know, uh, the, you know, Unleash the raw, unleash, you know, it's it's really like how am I supposed as a as a consumer? I would say as a consumer, because football is already a big business. How am I supposed to get behind this? Yeah. Even though, you know, I I'm trying my best to say, you know, I'm supporting Singapore, but All right. I don't have that passion. Let's get to the elephant in the room. Now, we've already had officials come out and say we've got to unleash the raw, we've got to look at our foreign talent scheme, we've Again. got to do this, we've got to do that. I've brought a prop with me, right? I don't uh... know if I do this. Now listen to this very briefly, right? In February 2001, the Singaporean national team competed in some pre-World Cup qualifying matches at the National Stadium. Not a single player in the starting 11 was Chinese. They were either Malay or Indian. Knowing that this country has over 4 million people, this was 2001, from which to choose its sportsmen and women, 77% of whom are Chinese, the implications are obvious. I wrote this in my book in 2001, before many of our listeners and viewers perhaps were even born. Mm. We are sitting here 22 years later. The same issue remains, Han Kyung. I went through the squad, the entire squad of this uh, tournament. Not one Chinese name there. There was a Korean name. There was a couple of U Eurasian lads there. Not one name there that was Chinese. Now, as soon as I say that, I can feel the oxygen being sucked out of the room. <laughs> I can feel the terror. What is the young Moor going to say next? Well, what I'm going to say next is very, very simple. No country on earth in any sport could realistically compete in any competition if 75% of their potential talent pool were not there. You couldn't do it. Right now, the, the, uh, the demographic in England and Wales that 
considers themselves white, Caucasian, is about 82%. So not that different. In Singapore, Chinese, 75%. If for whatever reason tomorrow, culturally, financially, whatever, the Caucasians of England stopped playing football, you removed 81% from the three lines talent pool, England wouldn't qualify for anything. They wouldn't qualify for anything because you can't do that. We are sitting here talking about fix this, fix that. As long as 75%, 75% of our population is not represented in our national football team, we will never qualify for anything of note and we will never win anything of note. I will go fix one. that or nothing will change. I will go one for the, it's not they are not represented, it's they are not willing to be represented. That part I'll leave to you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. As the rest of the yeah. Chinese yeah. guy. Yeah, that's the, the rest of the Chinese guy. And now the FAS are saying, well... Let's Im let's do that foreign talent thing again. Uh, they are thinking of fast still tracking. avoiding the issue. Yeah, still avoiding the issue. Yeah, still avoiding the we issue. We had this conversation twenty years ago. <sighs> I wrote it in my book twenty years ago. Because now they are seeing Malaysia having some success with naturalized Philippines, Philippines, Philippines also. Vietnam, I think Indonesia also. Indonesia had this. Uh, yeah. So Indonesia. so you know now now they are thinking oh let's bring it back again let's let's have bring in more foreign but you know. You know, you're skirting the main issue. You're skirting you're the only issue. No, the yeah. Facts are facts, right? Let's go even further. So I looked at Malaysia. Malaysia's demographic is about 20% plus Chinese in Malaysia. Mm. They've got more Chinese in their team than Singapore, <laughs> which is none. One of their Chinese players is a Singapore permanent <laughs> resident. Yes. He went through Dominic the Tan. football academies here. You couldn't make this up. Yep. Looked at it and said, nope, I fancy my chances <laughs> in Malaysia. <laughs> Why are we not talking about this as grown-ups, as adults? Mm. We have a fundamental problem. Whatever the sport, whatever the competition, whatever the nationality, if your majority race, 75%, is not represented or not willing to participate, you'll never succeed. No. Deal with that. Ask the question like a grown-up. What can we do to fix this? Can we change this? Because if we can't, if we yeah. can't, Nothing will change. The elephant in the well, room. And, and I'll come back in another Show 20 years. Show them the money. I'll come this, back this in another 20 will, years this topic and make will the same keep conversation. Going, uh, this topic will keep going on and on and on. If you look yeah. at it, let's look from the historical part, from during the Malaysia Cup days. When the team was multiracial, it was successful. How many Chinese were there? We A have Ling Tong Hai. Yeah. We have Stephen Tan. We have Lee Man Hon. We have David Lee. Go back even further. You have the, Song. Yeah, the, the, the Kwa family yeah, and so on and so on. That team, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s and the early 90s, Looked like Singapore. Yes. And then when we had the foreign talent scheme, that's where you realize everything just changed mm. to have like majority Malay. And I'm, I'm not dissing the, my own risk in that sense. If you're talking from a football perspective, questions need to be asked. The elephant in the room must be questioned because this elephant has been there for the longest time. And we're and the only one. And, yeah. I've never found another nation uh, in the FIFA rankings. Not and, one. If you can find one, let me. I thought Qatar maybe, but no, not even Qatar. Every other nation in world football has at least some representation, some, from its majority race. You know, you have white players, black players, you know, second generation immigrant players, whatever, no problem. But the majority race, whatever the country, will always have some representation, but except I, uh, here. I think the problem is this, that come, you need to look at the whole infrastructure from the bottom. I think from, I mean, like I said, this may sound like I'm touching on something very sensitive in here. Like from a Chinese parents, from Chinese parents, if you see like, do I see football as a career for my son? No. We know that's not the yeah, case. It's not. We've been and, talking about this. Yeah, and, and we have been talking it for many, 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 many years. years. How many decades have we gone through? Mm. From the 90s till now, and we are still talking about it, which is, frankly speaking, it's ridiculous. And like I said, questions need to be asked for the association. And I'm sorry, whether you like it or not, FAS need to really look deep inside and ask themselves, where is, where is they going wrong? I mean, because uh, the alternative is what? Okay, we'll find two you know two mixed race guys in England or Australia and we find out, oh, they've got, they got a Singaporean parent or a Singaporean grandparent. Bring them. We have, we'll bring them we in. We have that. You know, that How's guy, that going to fix anything? Yeah, but, but it's thing. a short-term thing. It, doesn't, culture, it, yeah. it avoids the elephant in the room Because you will, again. You, will, you will never, they will not, want to answer that question because that question goes deeper than what much deeper much than deeper unfortunately I feel, uh, and we've got a couple of other lads we've got the, we had the Ben Davis situation yes. we've got the lad at Wolves whose name escapes uh, me Harry Bird Whistle Harry Bird Whistle then you've got the national service element and then it's suddenly the oxygen is sucked out of the room again uh, uh, but yeah. Bottom line, we're not here to talk about race specifically. We're no. not here to talk about uh, politics specifically. We're no, here to talk like about football. football. Yes. And if you want to improve Singaporean football, we need to find a way to make it attractive to the majority race. All answers on a postcard, please, because unless we fix it, 
Nothing will change. We'll have the same conversation in 10 years, 20 years. Yeah. Nothing will change. Either do something about it or give up and go home. I mean, I don't know where we go from here. I don't know where we go from let's here. Let's see, if you, look, if you want to look deep, let's see from the infrastructure. Like I think we mentioned offhand. If, if this, Football if, places are, are being demolished. Yeah. Where, where are we going to get the infrastructure yeah. when we don't even bother about the infrastructure? But we have very nice condos. <laughs> we don't qualify for anything. But I we don't live in the condos, so I won't talk. We have very nice condos at <laughs> HDB. Two, two years later, if our podcast still carry, carry, is still on, and then we will have this same conversation again. I think. But what, more importantly, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, how do... We know the problem. It's been there for 20 years. How do we get the 75% of our potential talent pool to start playing? Is it really as simple as money? Because we all play at primary bottom school, line. we all play at secondary school, and then bottom it, line, it just goes away. Yeah, just do it right. I yeah. think we get there. <laughs> I, I don't know if you're. It's your money. Just do it right, right, Just do it right, right, right. Kachin, yeah. kachin, kachin. But so, what do you think? Let set, us know at Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Yeah, and okay. uh, is my daughter going to be eligible for this? Uh, yeah, because she's lived this since she was women's, a kid. Yeah, women's football. Right, and to yeah. answer your I mean, point, I think more likely to win the uh, Sea Games gold. <laughs> 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 go for it today. Yeah. But that's what we're, that kind of foreign born whatever. A Daniel Bennett, no problem, because mm. a Daniel Bennett was here since yeah. he was a little boy. I think yeah. he was here since he was two years yeah, old. No one's got an issue with that. Yeah, it's the, that's what we want. We want more Daniel Bennetts, more Fandis, more Alex Durix, and more, and more Chinese Singaporeans. More Chinese Singapore. Please. All right, so okay, let's finish off. Like, who, who, who do you think will win the AFF Cup? Vietnam, Vietnam also. Yeah, I'm picking Vietnam because they're the only ones at press time. <laughs> they haven't conceded a goal yet. We yeah. know that's, that's the one. They're definitely in the final. That's yeah. why they haven't conceded a goal yet. So I think collectively win. it's just Vietnam. Like we know, <laughs> you can right. see the fire in yeah. them when they play. Yeah. Yeah. So and what, the fact that you see the way they play, like people may say that it's dirty, dirty, but that is the passion that they show that they really want it. Mm. And I mean, football has always been about passion. If without passion, football is nothing. Yep, it's always been that. See, like without passion. So I do want Vietnam to win, but I I kind of don't want Vietnam to win because he will be insufferable. <laughs> because if he gets Argentina, Three. if he gets Argentina, Argentina, Argentina. what's the other one? Argentina, Singapore not qualifying. Singapore not qualifying. Yeah. Oh, just <laughs> give him the match ball and let him go home. Hattricks. Hattricks are pretty good. Apart from that, thank you very much for yeah. listening. Did we do the comments bit? Did we do it already? Yeah, yeah, we did. Okay, well, you know where to send all the comments. Thank you very much. And we'll see you all, same time, same place, next week. See ya. Good, good luck, Vietnam. <laughs>